An enslaved person is a person who another person treats as their property. They are not allowed to quit working for their owners, nor are they allowed to work for anyone else. In the past, indebted people, people who broke the law, or people on the losing side of a war, sometimes became enslaved. In other words, people usually became enslaved because someone forced them to. Slavery is rarely a voluntary state of being, nor is it an either-or. Viewed through a libertarian lens, almost everyone is at least partially enslaved. If you are 100% enslaved, all the fruits of your labor go to your owner. You keep nothing. By extension, your physical well-being becomes a priority of your owner, at least for the duration of your enslavement. Regardless of your political opinions and how effective you think taxes are, it can be valuable to view how much you're giving away each month from an individual perspective. You give away a specific part of your time and efforts when you pay taxes. In theory, taxes are giving something back to society at large, but you do not get to decide how the state allocates your confiscated resources. Viewed through this lens, you would be, insert your current tax rate here, percent enslaved, right? Wrong. Your income tax is not the only tax you're paying. Chances are high that you have to pay some other personal tax on top of that. Property tax, wealth tax, capital gains tax, inheritance tax, etc. So then, is this cumulative tax proportional to how much of an enslaved person you are? Nope. Your employer is paying taxes too. Chances are that the people you work for, be it your employer or your client, are paying a plethora of taxes themselves. Corporate taxes, capital gains taxes, social security contributions, etc. They have to get this money from somewhere, so chances are high that you're indirectly paying for their taxes too, through increased prices and fees, at least a part of them. Okay, are we done soon? No. If you live in an interventionist society, you're paying extra taxes every time you buy a good or service. Value-added taxes, or VAT, sales taxes, import tariffs, environmental taxes, all the taxes paid during the manufacture and transportation of the goods you're buying, they all add to your total enslavement rate. But it doesn't end there either. We have to include inflation, the most devious tax of all, the tax that funnels wealth from the begging hands of the have-nots into the iron fists of the have-it-alls. Government statisticians present inflation as a number. They calculate this number by looking at the cost of a bag of groceries from one year to another. This is a deliberate misleading of the public. In reality, inflation is a vector, always pointing upwards to some degree. Price inflation is proportional to the amount of new monetary units each year. It comes with a lag, but sooner or later, that new cash will increase your costs of living. The lion's share of the newly created, reallocated value of this new total money supply goes into luxury goods, fine art, real estate in high-cost areas, these types of things. The poor always end up paying for inflation. The proportion of the poor's total wealth held in cash is very high compared to the wealthy, who own assets that appreciate over time in fiat terms. Today, the actual monetary inflation of most countries is somewhere between 5% and 10%, and even higher than that in some cases. This may sound like a small problem, but it's a massive one in reality. First, everyone needs to make more than 5-10% to profit every year to keep up with the inflation rate. If you don't, you're losing money. Everyone not getting a 10% raise per year pays for someone else's excesses through their labor. With as little as a 5% inflation rate, it takes only 14 years to halve a currency's value. That's about as many years as it takes for Guns N' Roses to release a new album. Now add all these taxes and shadow taxes together. Are we then finally done with this bit of thought experiment? I'm afraid not, because we've forgotten about a crucial side effect of taxation. 
Everyone's Altered Time Preference Whenever the state imposes a tax on a person, that person increases his time preference. Like robbery, taxation forces us to adopt a higher time preference. A higher time preference means more short-term decision-making. With a reduced amount of room for afterthought, people can't plan ahead for the future. This leads to the misallocation of resources everywhere. Since every citizen suffers from an altered time preference, misallocation happens everywhere all the time. The deeper into a tax-based society we get, the harder it becomes to separate the actual market signals from the noise of interventionist misspending. Goods and services are produced not because there's a market demand for them, but because they're subsidized in one way or another.